Well, good morning and welcome to St Matt's Online Church. My name is Johnny and I'm the student pastor here. And um, it's really great to be with you here this morning. Uh, as you may have noticed, we're doing things a little bit differently today. Um, due to the changing government guidelines, we've had to uh, pre-record everything uh, for this week. Um, but we're still looking forward to having a great time with you um, over this Sunday. And um, just to give you a bit of an idea of how we're going to run things today, uh, we're going to start with some worship led by our worship pastor, John. We're going to spend some time in prayer, have a testimony, and then Reuben is going to be leading us in our sermon in just a short while. Um, so throughout the service, obviously use the live chat. Um, that's there and available for you to, to put prayer requests in, um, to ask questions, to talk to one another, um, and uh, to generally stay in communication throughout the talk uh, and the service. And also, um, we would love for you to use our prayer request button as well, which is just at the bottom of your screen here, um, if you want to go into a private chat with anybody uh, about a particular thing that might be going on in your life at the moment. But as with every service, we want to begin with a time of worship uh, together, singing songs to God. And um, I wanted to highlight a bit about um, some of the importance, particularly, I think, of worshipping together at this time, of singing together at this time. Um, and some words from Psalm 145 came to mind in particular today as I was thinking about this. And the psalmist writes this. He says, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. I love that bit where it says that we're going to bless his name forever and ever. That means in the good times and in the difficult times as well. So let's begin our service as we always do, by standing together wherever you may be, in your homes, with your family, with friends, um, whatever that might look like for you, or by yourself. And perhaps just uh, if you feel comfortable to do so, you may want to place your arms out to the side like this, you might want to close your eyes. And we're just going to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit with us here this morning, today. Jesus, would you come? Spirit, would you fill us? Holy Spirit, we pray that you would calm our minds, that you would clear them of all noise and busyness, and that we might know your presence with us here today. Thank you, Father, that you promised to be amongst us when we gather. Would you join us in our songs of praise and worship today? Amen. Let's worship God together. I am. 
been chosen and not forsaken Who I am, who you say I am You are for me and not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me not against me oh, I am who you say I am Yes, I am who you say I am Who the sun sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I Not for your sake, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I Work, 
promise keep thine in the darkness my God that is who you are we make a miracle work promise keep thine in the darkness my God that is who you are we make a miracle work promise keep thine in the darkness my God that is who you are you the we make a we make a miracle work promise keep thine in the darkness my God that is who you are oh 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 that is who you are yes that is who you are oh that is who you are oh that is who you
is alive Forever lifted high Your name cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus You made the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Your silence fear Jesus, Jesus You made the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus oh. Let's just pray to finish up our time of worship Thank you John for leading us in that this morning I was thinking of the psalm that says these words, God is our refuge and our strength and our ever-present help in times of trouble. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are indeed our refuge, somewhere we can run to when things are difficult. Pray that you would bless us now as we continue in our time together. Amen. So we're going to pray for three things today. The first of which is to pray for Derriford, for our hospitals here in Plymouth, but also to pray for our NHS staff nationally as they work tirelessly to face um, what has become the biggest crisis in peacetime um, for the NHS to face. Secondly, we're going to pray uh, for those who are in isolation at the moment, particularly the one and a half million people who have been uh, recently contacted by the government, those who are most vulnerable in our society, those who have to keep themselves um, in isolation for you know up to three months. And thirdly, we're going to pray uh, for ourselves as well. Now, I don't know about you, but I've experienced a fair amount of fear and anxiety over the last week and a half or so. And you know, it gets compounded every time I turn on the news. And yet Jesus says to us um, that he leaves with us his peace. He promises us a peace that passes all understanding. And so we'll pray for all three of those things and they'll come up on our screens in just a moment. But before they do, um, again, can I just invite you in your homes, if you're not already standing, to, to stand if you're able to do so. Again, to, to place your hands in front of you and close your eyes and pray out loud as a family uh, or as friends or as housemates or on your own um, for these things to be transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together now. So let's round off our prayers by saying the prayer um, that Jesus himself taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we're so grateful to have you with us today. It's really exciting to be able to do church in this way, even though we can't meet physically. And just wanted to give you a couple of announcements before Reuben um, gives us our message today. 
The first of which is that if you want to get up and running in giving into the life of St. Matt's Church, um, then we would love for you to be able to do that. It's super straightforward. Um, you'll see a link next to the chat that you can follow um, that just simply says giving. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, um, then there'll be a link appearing just below me here um, that allows you um, to give to the life of the church if you would like to do so. The other thing that we would like to make you aware of as well is if you're new joining us here today or you've never filled out one of our joint adventure cards before in our church services, then we would love for you to feel as connected as possible. And you can fill out one of our joint adventure forms available online, again, just above the chat box uh, if you're watching live. Um, or alternatively, you can find it on our website at stmplymouth.org.uk. But now, without any further ado, uh, Ruben is going to share our message with us today. Hey St. Matt's, <laughs> here we are then, uh, church and home. I hope that you've got your drink, I've got mine ready, I've got my popcorn ready, I hope you've got yours. Um, one of the advantages of being in your home is you can get all cosy. I know we'd like to be with each other, we'd love to be with you too. And um, But actually I've just been really enjoying this online experience and seeing all of your comments, so keep those coming. Um, get yourself comfortable. Um, God is still the same God in this situation as he ever has been. And so we want to dig into his word. We believe that he's still alive, he's still at work, and he's still got a word to speak to us specifically today. Um, so uh, let's get the Bibles out, let's get the apps up ready to tune into the Bible. We've been looking at how to pray and there's different prayers in the Bible and the prayers that uh, um, Ollie was uh, offering uh, for us to think about were a series of prayers that Paul prays um, uh, and writes down the prayer that he's going to pray in the New Testament. And we've been looking through Ephesians and so this is about Ephesians 3 and I'm going to read it out to you but you may want to have a look at Ephesians 3. Um, so I'll just dig it out now. Three, Ephesians 3 uh, verse 16 and it says this I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll do it again. Not many of you were responding. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The verse I wanted to tune into and hone into here uh, was verse 16 that says, I pray that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. I pray that he may strengthen you. It's our prayer for you as a church community. And I hope it's your prayer for us that in this time of complexity, uh, that he may strengthen us with power. Through his spirit in uh, your inner being. Uh, so shall we say a prayer before I just give you a couple of reflections and we start to uh, tune into what the Lord might be wanting to say to us. Holy Spirit, come and be among your people. Even in each of our individual homes. In fact, more so, Lord, we pray that your presence will be uh, so strong in our homes. That anybody who is remotely near our homes might see and feel and sense something of the glory of God. And as we look at your word, I pray that you will speak a word in season to every person listening. Thank you that we can trust you, that you have a word for us. We give you all the glory and all the honour. Amen. So a couple of reflections that I wanted to share with you about this passage, particularly looking at that verse 16. And the first is that he talks about your inner being. There's two sort of uh, parts to humanity, isn't there? There's your inner being and there's your outer being. There's the inner sense of you and there's the outer sense of you. The life that's outside that people see and the inner you, your real true character and your true nature. And uh, of course, it's always been the case that we've uh, projected a certain impression of ourselves or a certain image of ourselves. And this is our outer life that people see. 
And the closer you get to know someone, maybe you start to see through some of that a little bit more to their inner being and the true or closer to true then. Of course, in the last couple of years, Instagram and uh, Facebook have gone ballistic uh, in uh, the art of crafting a really carefully curated outer life that other people can see. Uh, whether that's uh, uh, projecting that my family is perfect and always incredibly ha happy to have photos taken and to spend time with me, uh, or whether or not it's uh, uh, how successful I am at my job or how beautiful I am or how incredibly quick I can do a quick uh, makeup routine, uh, whatever else it might be. I, I haven't done a lot of that myself. Um, but there's all sorts of different ways that we project uh, what we want people to think about. And most of it is about superiority. When I see your posts about your brilliant situation and your success in your life, I go back, I do one even more impressive. It's about pushing further and further into this expectation that I am successful and, if anything, superior. This is the outer life that we share. Of course, there's an inner reality that's different. And adversity is the key thing that draws our inner life out into existence. It exposes something of our inner being or our inner life. Adversity has the ability to do that and we're in a time of adversity now. So I wonder in the time of adversity that we find ourselves, what of your inner life is being revealed? What in your inner life of your family or your neighbours is being revealed in this time of trial, in this time of challenge? I wonder what your response has been uh, to the threat of a virus. I wonder how you've uh, thought that through, what it's drawing out in you. Are you consumed with anxiety? Are you consumed with panic? Are you starting to uh, worry about what your future might be in terms of your work or in terms of your home or in terms of how much money you are hoping to make? Are you consumed with anxiety about an early death? Or worried about where you might end up uh, were you to die? All sorts of things can start spilling out. In any situation of uh, oppression or adversity or trial, uh, we'll see different elements of our personality start to reveal itself. Where we've got our hope and our confidence and our trust. This passage is talking about what is going on with your inner being. I wonder how you're responding to the food situation. Have you looked after yourself? Have you stockpiled as much food as you possibly could need for the next six years? Were you the one who took all the tins of beans? Maybe you've got toilet paper coming out of your ears. I mean, not literally right now. Um, but you've made sure that you guys are going to be okay. Have you become more in individualistic and less community focused? In times of adversity, our inner being comes out and is revealed. I wonder how you've responded to government lockdown. Are you out having five walks a day in defiance of the one walk a day? Are you out mixing with your friends? Are you angry about how dare they tell you how to live your life? Has it revealed something about your relationship to authority? Each of these things I can recognise within myself, different ways that I've responded. And if not this crisis, then even just the pressures of daily life, revealing something about my inner character. In the pressure, that inner character can be revealed. I wonder how this situation has uh, caused your responses to neighbour, who you even consider to be your neighbour in this situation. I've had to think to myself, Whoa, who is my neighbour? How can I love my neighbour, even in this uh, unusual circumstance that we find ourselves in? So the first focus on this passage, I think, is about self-examination. It's who am I really? Who even am I? I'm starting to discover something about how I'm responding. And then moving on from that, how I might want to respond. This passage says, I pray that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. I pray that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit, through his spirit. That's not about your spirit. You have a spirit that's a small s. This is about his spirit. It's a big s. This is God's Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who comes to dwell and live within us if we believe in Jesus Christ. What a mystery. What a miracle. Is it really possible as you sit there as a believer in Jesus Christ that you have uh, the living God living inside of you? Extraordinary. Unthinkable. All that was achieved by Jesus Christ on the cross makes it possible that his spirit might dwell within us. It's incredible to think of. 
and he's got a job description, or as Ollie would call it, a role description. The Holy Spirit's one job description is to start to change us from the inside out, mold us and form us to be more like Jesus Christ. So that in a situation like we find ourselves in, we might discover what Jesus Christ would be doing, how he'd be responding to, to restrictions and, and not having, and inequalities in society, and those that are struggling more, how he would live. And the Holy Spirit's job is simply to do this. It's a shift from the Old Testament that had ten commandments. We tried to conform to these laws. We tried to conform to the righteousness of God. And yet the prophets began to say that there would come a time when instead of having these laws written on stone, they'd be written on our hearts. That we'd start to do them simply as a manifestation of our inner being. That our inner being might map and be seen as our outer being too, that there be congruence between the two, that the law would be written on our hearts. I wonder if you've um, ever wondered uh, how popcorn is made. You have. Good, uh, then I'll tell you. Popcorn doesn't start like this, of course not. It starts as a really small, hard kernel of corn, uh, and we pop it in the microwave uh, most commonly, or just buy it ready done. Uh, and then it, it, it sort of changes shape, doesn't it, and pops and becomes popcorn. When we put it in the microwave, we're not changing or heating. We're not trying to heat up the outside of the corn. No, every little piece of corn has a tiny droplet of water in it. And it's that tiny droplet of water that is heated up from the inside out um, and starts to get more and more heated, starts to produce steam, and that creates pressure. So this droplet of water inside the kernel of corn, the hard shell, but inside the water is starting to push against it. And the steam starts to increase pressure. And the pressure builds and builds and builds until pop. The whole of the outer side is unrecognizable. And this is the popcorn that we eat. And this is the bit that we enjoy. I don't particularly enjoy it when you've got the seed in the bottom of the packet and it nearly breaks your teeth. The Holy Spirit is much like this. He dwells inside us and as we heat up the Holy Spirit's present within us, how do we do that? By prayer, by digging into prayer, by spending more time with God, through worship and singing songs of worship in our homes now, using uh, different media, praising God together, allowing that to wash over us, by meditating on who he is, by falling at the mercy, by submitting to God and falling at the mercy of God. In reflection, in meeting with others, and now we can't meet uh, necessarily uh, physically unless there are people in your household, but we can meet on um, video conferencing um, and continuing to meet with each other increases the heat uh, and increases the filling of the Holy Spirit such that the pressure inside us as the heat of the Holy Spirit's work within us starts to build. The pressure on the outside of our outer life, the shell of our life, starts to increase and increase and increase until pop. Our life looks nothing like what our life used to be. Now we look more like Jesus Christ. So my question, uh, my second question here for self-reflection is, how in this time of lockdown and restrictions and isolations and distancing, how are we increasing the heat of our faith? How are we increasing the filling of the Holy Spirit? so that we might become more and more like Jesus in the way that we respond to this crisis, in the way that we love each other, and the way that we love our neighbours. Kierkegaard, a famous Christian philosopher, says, there's only one proof of the truth of Christianity. There's only one proof of the truth of Christianity, and that is the inward truth. That is the inward truth. If you want to prove Christianity, it's not going to be with rational discussions that somebody else will have a different answer and then you try and find another answer on top of that. No. The radical proof is a changed life that is miraculously different than it ever was before and begins to look like the person Jesus Christ who changed the course of history was the Son of God who came to save us. This is the proof. And so we become like a shining light. The first thing is, who am I really? The second thing is, his spirit is in us. And finally, uh, I pray that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. It's his power. It's not ours. It's his power. It's not ours. 
as a mystery of God, that if we want to discover the power of God, it's found in our weakness. It's found in our letting go. He doesn't strengthen our natural power. He gives us a supernatural power. Jesus says in Acts 1.8, um, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We receive this power. It's in our loss of strength. It's in our loss of control and the loss of our will and our own power that we begin to discover his. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're trying to assert our own control and our own power. We use aggressive means and powerful, superior means to try and force the kingdom of God to change the world so that it's his kind of justice. We get angry with people. We get dominant with people. And actually, this is not God's way at all. He says, uh, in your weakness, my strength will be revealed. My glory will be made pure. In Ephesians, we laugh a lot about the bit that says submit to one another, particularly when it says wives submit to husbands or husbands submit to wives. And we're like, yeah, right. If we can't even submit to each other, how can we submit to the living God? And yet he calls us to submit ourselves because it's in submission that he lifts us up. Jesus says that we have to lose our life in order to find it. And he's the ultimate example of one who was willing to give up his own power and his own assertions to become submitted fully to the will of God, to suffer, to deny himself uh, and to die so that we might be uh, able to have peace with God and to find a uh, new life. I wonder if you have uh, got yourself one of these lockdown puppies. Apparently, uh, tons of people are buying puppies at the moment uh, because they're in lockdown anyway, so they can do the toilet training thing and they couldn't take the dog out. Uh, remember, kids, a uh, puppy is not just for lockdown. Um, but if you've got a puppy, you'll be wondering about um, how to train the puppy. Uh, let me show you my puppy. We've talked about her a few times before. Here she is. She's not quite a puppy anymore, and she's not a massive fan of of, uh, of uh, being on camera, probably. Um, but there she is. That's Aya. There's two different ways, two main ways to train a puppy. One is to say, well, what does the dog want? What does it seem like it wants? And to give it whatever it wants. So uh, if it wants to eat, you give it more food. It might be you begging at your table, and that's going to happen. Uh, it might be that it, uh, you start to give it lots of food, your own food. It may be that it uh, just wants to go for a wild run around somewhere outside and you just let it off and let it do its own thing. It may be that um, uh, uh, you give it extraordinary freedoms um, uh, to, to, to wander upstairs or to, uh, to irritate different people. Uh, what we find is this way of indulging the dog in whatever it wants is that very often the dog starts to look really unhealthy. It can look lackluster. Even its hair uh, becomes uh, less shiny. Uh, its teeth deteriorate in health. Its eyes seem dull. It hasn't got energy. Um, it may be aggressive. Um, it may just be uh, lethargic. Um, there's another way to train a dog, and that is to uh, actually teach the dog uh, to uh, do the things that you know are best for it. So you give it huge amounts of exercise and that above all is the most important thing for a dog. Lots and lots and lots of exercise. And then a right amount of food, of the right kinds of food that you know are for the dog's best interest. And that'll help with its energy levels and also its general health. And it keeps it at a good weight and a healthy weight. And equally training and discipline so that the dog learns how to respond to you, to keep it safe, to keep other people safe. And dogs love training, and they'll become more and more alert and more and more attentive to you, and their eyes sparkle, and they are buzzing with energy, and their health will be vibrant. Of course, I'm making an analogy here with how the Holy Spirit might um, dictate our lives for us, take the reins of our lives, so that we might just be the most healthy, have the most abundant life that we've been promised by Jesus. The alternative is that we just dominate the plan for ourselves, being pulled left, right and centre by our subjective wants and desires. And very often this leaves us in a, in, a, in a less healthy way. We need to submit to God. There's something about losing confidence in the world, about letting go of our confidence and our hope in an earthly hope, but actually putting our confidence and our hope in God. And that happens when we let go of our own dominance and our own desires to be on top all of the time. After all, we are but fragile beings. The reality of exposing our inner being is that we are being honest about the fact that we are, as the Bible calls us, jars of clay, that we have an element of fragility, vulnerability, 
that we might have cracks and breaks. And God says, well, you know, that's nothing to be ashamed of, but you do need to recognize who you are in relation to me. And I'm going to put my treasure in your jar of clay. And then through that, God will be glorified. And of course, I'm alluding to a passage that Paul wrote in Corinthians. And I'd love to look at that as we come to a close now. It's in Corinthians 2 or 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. So uh, if you want to look it up, that's fine. But I'm just going to tell you about it now. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. This is what happens when we have the power of God in us. And it's not just a power for us to indulge ourselves. It's a power for God to be able to enact his glory in the world and to reach out to a hurting world. In our passage in Ephesians 3 verse 20 says that he will do immeasurably more according to his power at work in us. God's immeasurably more is through us. What a privilege. And this is what we can allow him to do as we submit fully to his purposes in our lives. Of course, Jesus in Matthew 5 says, let your light shine that people may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And we can glorify God through our good works by shining a light uh, and revealing that glory in the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It would be good to take some time now even just to reflect on a specific uh, word that the Holy Spirit would want to speak to you in the light of uh, what we've been speaking about. So I invite you to take a moment, maybe close your eyes, maybe have your hands open in front of you. And just ask uh, the Holy Spirit to fill you now. And there'll be some people watching uh, today who d- haven't yet put their trust in Jesus Christ. And, and yet they're feeling drawn towards him. They're feeling a stirring in their heart and wanting to know more about the hope that can be found in him. At a time where people are feeling helpless and hopeless, there is great hope in Jesus Christ. And if that's you and you're ready to make a commitment to Jesus, then I invite you to uh, raise a hand as we would have done in church to give you an opportunity to know that it's a real moment that you're experiencing, to remember it more clearly and also to invite people around you to be able to pray for you. And so you may want to signal on our online chat or um, in a private prayer request so that people can pray and can talk about what the next step for you would be. Either way, I invite you to pray this prayer now. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you gave up your power, that you submitted to the will of God and were prepared to die for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. Help me to live a life following you that I might be filled with the Holy Spirit too, that people might see me transform miraculously into the beautiful life that Jesus had, and that we might see more of your kingdom come and peace and love reign. Amen. For others of us, um, there may be a specific word here, just recognising that actually the inner being that's been revealed at this time um, has shown weakness and fear, and a lack of confidence in God. And God doesn't condemn us, but convicts us. And in this moment, God is convicting you and I to turn up the heat on the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives through prayer, through dedicating ourselves, using this opportunity of being at home more to become more disciplined in our prayer lives, to get connected with others through our small groups, to seek God's face more often and more truly so that we can begin to know that transformation. I pray, Lord Jesus, that whoever calls on you even today, that you would fill them with your power, that you would give them strength to make new rhythms of life that draw them closer to you and that in that transformation they may be drawn closer to those that need you. And there's a final word here, of course, for people Maybe me, maybe all of us to some degree, but some particularly will be feeling a call about letting go of trying to control things. 
letting go of trying to force people or frustration at people's behavior in this crisis, that they're not being as Christ-like as you would like. Sometimes we fluctuate between having hyper control over things and then another moment we're in a panic because God doesn't seem to be doing the things that we've demanded of him. It's the wrong way around. We need to submit to God. Let go of your ego. Let go of yourself. And let him manifest new life within you. Sometimes there needs to be death. In fact, every time between life and new life is a death. And so we let go of the things that we've put our trust in and we discover the new life that God has for us, a new confidence and strength that's found in him. I pray that God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, may strengthen you in power through his spirit in your inner being. Amen. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Every breath that I take, every 
moment I'm away Lord have your way in me Thank you Reuben for sharing that message with us and thank you John as well for leading worship for us today. We've just come to the sort of official end of our service um, but before we finish up um, I wanted to say a final blessing and to remind you that we've got uh, the chat still running that's going to be going for another 20 minutes or so if you're watching live with us today so if you want any again any prayer um, just push the prayer button at the bottom or if you want to share any bible verses or just continue like socializing in general through the online chat then do continue uh, to do so for the next 20 minutes or so and um, finally if you're watching us on YouTube and you have any prayer requests then again do send those through to us and you can email us at prayer at stnplymouth.org.uk that's prayer at stnplymouth.org.uk uh, and we would love to pray with you either at some point over the next couple of days uh, or in the coming week or so um, regarding those things but for now let's finish with a blessing so Father, thank you for being with us here this morning. Thank you for making your presence known in our homes, in our living rooms, across this city. We pray that in this time of fear and uncertainty, you would fill us with courage, that you would teach us new ways to share about who you are, and you would bless each one of us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, who is Son, who is Holy Spirit, be with each of us and those who we love and care about this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, do join us again next week, same time, 10 a.m., um, for our next message in the series, uh, which uh, will be led by me, uh, which is exciting. And um, we look forward to seeing you then. God bless, guys. See you soon. <laughs>